May the words of my lips and the meditations of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, good morning and many thanks for this opportunity to prepare a Sunday sermon in the 46th week of, of our COVID isolation. The severity of our lockdown has varied a lot over those 46 weeks and right now it feels as if it is at its most restrictive. But my wife, Krisha, and I should be in the next batch for vaccinations, so there will be light at the end of the tunnel, just not yet. Today, I had a choice uh, for my next uh, Wednesday's talk and devotions available on St Mary's website and on my YouTube channel. Uh, I chose the, the readings for the uh, fourth Sunday of Epiphany, but today I've chosen this gospel reading for Candlemas, the last day of Christmas, the commemoration of the presentation of Christ in the temple, which formed part of our worship this morning. The actual day of the presentation falls on Tuesday. Jesus had, of course, been circumcised at eight days old, like all male Jews. But following that, <clears throat> the, the indelible marking of Jesus as a member of the Jewish community, there came the presentation of Christ in the temple. Now, this would have been the occasion when a firstborn male was redeemed or bought back from God. As Luke pointed out, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. Now this goes right back to the time before Moses brought the Ten Commandments down from the mountain uh, to a time when in really primitive Hebrew society priesthood was reserved for any firstborn human male. Um, firstborn males were seen as special in that primitive society and were regarded as chosen by God to serve him. They lost that right to priesthood during the rebellion that took place in the desert whilst Moses was up the mountain speaking to God. Half the people wanted to go back to slavery in Egypt and the rest were getting ready to worship the golden calf they had made. The tribe of Levi, however, the Cohens and Levins and Lewinskys that still survive today, remained faithful to God and to Moses, and they became the official priesthood, first in the meeting tent, the tabernacle, and later in the Jerusalem temple built by Solomon. But firstborn sons of the Hebrews still belonged to God, and they had to be ransomed as soon as the mother's period of um, seclusion after childbirth had ended. The price was, according to Luke, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. That would explain why Luke begins the, this gospel reading um, with the words, when the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Now, two things are going on. Jesus' birth is being thanked for. He is being owned by his family as God's gift. And also, Mary's release from her confinement was being celebrated. But we have a problem. That word purification. Purification took place in obedience to the Old Testament law of Moses. For seven days after childbirth, a mother was regarded as unclean, and for 33 days following that, she was required to stay at home. After which, on the 40th day, according to this Old Testament law, she must offer a sacrifice of purification. This involved, the, for Mary, the six-mile journey up to Jerusalem. Now, this purification after childbirth is awkward for us. It was, it was common enough 
in the days of my mother and my grandmother, as soon as it was safe after the baby was born, the mother would go to the priest, or in some cases the vicar would go to the mother, and they would use the short service from the Book of Common Prayer called the Purification of Women After Childbirth, or the Churching of Women. Now this service uh, started to drop out of use around the time of the Second World War in England, and it is now hardly ever used. It seems to us in the early 21st century that the Jews of the time of Jesus had all kinds of unhealthy attitudes concerning sex and blood and the human body. And in the light of that, it is more awkward still to us Christians that purification should be at all necessary after the birth of the Christ, whom we believe to be the sinless son of God and a pure virgin. St. Luke would have been aware of the, this contradiction himself, and yet he still included the story in his Gospel. If Luke had been making it all up, he would not have invented this story, so, so it really is quite likely that Mary did go to the temple and did offer the sacrifice for her purification. What would be more natural for Luke, then, that he should describe how purifications were normally necessary and then show how Mary's purification was exceptional. But he doesn't do that. What we believe is that Christ became incarnate as a human being. As a human being, he would have a normal human need for religion. But more than that, his human roots would have been amongst the superstitious and amongst those whose faith was riven with illogical taboos. He came, he became like us in every way. That's what St Paul tells us. And once we realise that, we must be careful not to despise what went on in the temple that day any more than we would despise our mothers and grandmothers for going to the priest for his prayers of reassurance after childbirth. This respect for religious tradition brought Christ in touch for the first time with Jerusalem. It was a contact he never lost. Hard things are said about Jerusalem and how repeatedly she slew her prophets, including Christ. But Christ did not forsake Jerusalem. Moreover, it was in Jerusalem that he was first recognised. Simeon recognised him. Anna recognised him. Now, let's look first at Simeon. Probably, elderly Simeon had heard of the child born in Bethlehem. And what is more, Luke illustrates the truth that there were spiritual resources in Judaism by telling us the stories of Simeon and Anna, resources which Simeon and Anna used to recognise the child who was there being presented before their very eyes. We should notice the four descriptions that are given of Simeon. He was upright, devout, expectant, and endowed with the Holy Spirit. He recognised the Christ in Mary's arms. If we are to discern Christ in the world, we need to cultivate the same virtues and become more upright, devout, expectant and spiritual. These virtues are not primarily intellectual, they are moral and spiritual. We can gather from Simeon's words in the Nunc Dimittis what he saw in Christ. He saw the child Jesus as deliverance, light and glory. He saw him as a deliverer for the Jewish nation, which shows that he recognised how defective his Jewish faith was without Christ. But Christ is deliverance, light and glory to all who will receive him. This is the gospel, the gospel to be preached and the gospel to be interpreted. But the deliverance, the illumination and the glory 
will not be achieved without suffering. This also Simeon sensed. There will be rejection and piercing of the heart and a divisive Christ laying bare even what people think. So the shadow of the cross falls over the purification ceremony of Mary and Jesus being presented in the temple and Simeon saw it. And now Anna. Her significance is that she recognised Christ through the practice of religious devotion. Despite what some people might tell you, um, Christ is often discovered in organised religion, if we are looking for him, but we do need to look for him. The stories of Simeon and Anna between them both condemn and justify organised religion. Organised religion is condemned because only this vanishingly small number of people, only two, recognised Christ within the temple precincts. And those who recognised him did not include the clergy or the temple authorities. <clears throat> On the other hand, organised religion is justified in that these two did recognise him there, it was in the temple that Jesus was first recognised, the Jewish temple. The temple of closed, crabbed, stuffy religion. <coughs> it was in the temple that these two were watching and waiting. It was by what was taught and practised in the temple that they learnt to watch and wait. This teaches us to be patient with the church in our own time. After seeing this, we must be patient with the church and we must be careful how we rebel against too much religion. Organised religion is always imperfect. It is doubtful if we can grow up to God, if we bypass it altogether, uh, we bypass altogether what the Jewish faith represents in this story, which is the church, organised religion and everything transcendent it stands for. And as if to reinforce the lesson of patience, our reading ends when they had done everything prescribed in the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. There was Bethlehem and there was Nazareth and between them, there was Jerusalem. So, be grateful for the story of Jesus and Mary in the temple. Appreciate what the church, its teaching and its worship bring to you. And as Christmas tide fades once again into the past, carry with you the gratitude of Simeon and Anna that Christ became human in order that we might participate ourselves in the divine. Amen.